So welcome to Stop Motion Studio HD and in this video I'm just going to show how I use this app in my high school classroom, how easy it really is to use. So here I've taken some plasticine, I've got the Stop Motion app on my iPad and just by taking photos at regular intervals, uh, this took me all of about one or two minutes to create a very simple animation. As soon as you're done taking photos, you can click the settings button on the right hand side here and you can change the frames per second to adjust the speed of your animation. And then if you click play, it will play your animation immediately. Now there are some very useful features on this app. One of them is this overlay control that you can see right here. So if you happen to move the iPad and you want to position it back over the last image that you took so that the animation is smooth, you can adjust it to the last image you took or to what you're seeing on the camera. My students found the timer very useful so here I'm adjusting it to five seconds that means it's going to take a photo every five seconds so in between that you have time to adjust your animation to the next image. Now in my opinion one of the reasons that this app is easiest to use in the classroom is because of this audio recording feature that you have right here so the students can record their narration or their commentary straight over their animation and it creates the movie all together at once. There is the option of adding music out of the iTunes library but this is not so useful if you want your students to create a commentary. So the first time that I used this app as a science teacher I had them animate transcription and translation. These are some examples of those animations. They were created in two 50 minute lessons and that was from the start of introducing the stop motion app and the iPads to them to the finish when they had completed their movies. To introduce this to students I started off with my objectives and I explained to them that particularly with a three dimensional process that takes place over time that modeling would help them to identify their misconceptions so we can correct them and enhance their understanding. Three to four slides in this PowerPoint presentation were used to show the students the main controls in the stop motion app and I had them do this with the iPads in front of them so that they could actually identify it on their own iPads and this took about five to ten minutes maximum in the first lesson. To give the students some structure I shared with them what I believe to be the optimal workflow for creating one of these animations. So I asked them to model their component parts and to rehearse this before recording a sequence of images and then finally adding the commentary or the narration over the top of it. So finally I want to share with you some tricks of the trade that has made this much easier to implement in a high school classroom at least as far as modelling is concerned. First of all, in addition to the modelling clay that you might want to use, there are several other pieces of equipment that I've found to be particularly helpful. One of them here is the masking tape, the Sharpies and the Ziploc bags. So the masking tape can be used to put on the back of the iPad so students can identify which one they've been working on. That is if you're using a classroom set of iPads as opposed to kids' personal iPads. The masking tape and the Sharpies can also be used to label up Ziploc bags and this is what you can have your students put the small models in so that the plasticine doesn't dry up in between lessons. You can see that I have a variety of other modelling materials including straws and string, obviously the plasticine, but it's useful to provide students with a backdrop for their animation so for that I use different colour poster paper. So give it a try. I hope that your students explore their understanding and end up having fun as mine did.